Hello everyone. This video is part of the video series we are doing on topic models. In this video particularly, we'll be discussing the diagrammatic representation of topic models that is called plate notation. Topic models are initially introduced for text analysis. However, its application has outgrown into different other areas as well. It's a probabilistic approach that identifies the hidden thematic structure in a collection of documents. So given a collection of documents, topic model will, would iterate through all the documents and would come up with few topics that are concepts or subjects discussed in these documents. Each concept, subject, or topic is represented by a group of words. Before we proceed into its uh, deeper analysis of its uh, diagrammatic representation, if you're interested in working of topic models, its code demonstration, tuning the hyperparameters for topic models, or looking into other variants of topic models, please have a look at our other videos as well. Uh, topic models, modeling is basically a family of techniques, but the most commonly used approach is called LDA or Latin Dirichlet allocation. In fact, LDA itself has got a number of extensions, but we'll be looking into its most basic form. So this is its diagrammatic representation. As we can see, it has got three different types of symbols. We have got rectangles that are got plates, and probably that's why it's called plate notation. Then we have got arrows that shows the orientation or the flow, and then we have got variables represented by circles. Now, if we first uh, examine the plates, uh, they represent loops, and this is the size of the loop. So in this case, we have got a loop of size k. Here, k is the total number of topics, and those of you who have worked with topic models would know that this is an initial parameter of topic. topics is known prior to the analysis, or we can actually try different values for k depending upon uh, the, the, the results that we get. So uh, this k is already known. This loop is of size m here. We have got nested loops. The outer loop is of size m here. m is the total number of documents. And within each m, we have got an inner loop that goes through n iterations. Here, n is the total number of words that we have got in a single document. So basically, we are looking into each word of each document. This loop, this nested loop is going to execute through all the words in the data set. Uh, the flow shows that uh, since there is no input to alpha and beta, so it's a clear indication that alpha and beta are also initial parameters. That is, these values are provided by the end user before running the uh, before running this um, technique. Now, but there are a special type of initial parameters that are called hyperparameters, and they hugely control the results of topic models. Different values for alpha and beta can be tried so that uh, better results can be achieved. However, we can also use some intelligent technique that is going to give us suitable values for alpha and beta. Alpha and beta are vectors and beta is a vector of size k. So we have different beta values for different topics. However, if you do not know much about topics, we can have a uniform values for all k, for all topics from zero to k minus one, or we can keep it as a scalar value as well. Similarly, alpha is also a vector of size d. So each, uh, sorry, of size m, which is the total number of documents. So for each, each value of m shows that how we want to deal with that document. Uh, we'll discuss it in detail in our other videos, but here you need to understand that it's a vector of size m. However, if you do not know anything about the documents and we want to deal them equally, so we can use single value for all the documents. In other words, we can also use it as a, single, as, as a scalar variable. Now, as you can see, alpha is contributing towards calculating theta. Now, theta here is a, demand, is a distribution between documents and topics. It's also, uh, we can think of it as, uh, as a matrix between the total number of documents into the total number of topics. So a single row of this matrix represents the values uh, of the, the, the distribution of topics across a single document. If we sum all the values of a single row, we are going to get a value that is close to one. That is the distribution of all the topics within a single document. And it's roughly equal to one because we are using some smoothing parameters as well. Similarly, uh, beta is contributing towards calculating phi and phi here is again a distribution and it's a distribution of K into v where k is the total number of topics and v is the vocabulary size or the set of unique words so this distribution is going to give us the representation of words within each topic for example uh, if we have got a topic so how its its, its values is distributed across to for different for different words for different words in the vocabulary these two these two variables phi and theta 
represent the state of the model. So, for example, if we are five iterations into the topic model and we look into the values of theta and phi, so that is the state of the model after five iterations. The model in each iteration, the model goes through all words of all documents to complete a single iteration. So, um, when we say our um, when we say we have gone through 1000 iterations, so basically we have traversed through all words of all documents 1000 times each, and each time the state of the model updates. The next state of the model is dependent on the previous state following Markov approach uh, in the inference technique that is used. The most commonly used inference technique is the Gibbs sampling. So this technique basically uh, we need to have uh, we need to have a state so that the next state can be evaluated. So the model is given initial state at random and then each time it's executed states that is the theta and the phi updates and the model keeps on uh, converging on the actual solution. Now, as you can see, the variables again here are of two types. We have got variables that have got white background and other sort of variable that has got gray background. Now, this is the observed variable. Observed variable or the given variable or the input variable. We already know what the word is because we are given documents that has got words. But all the other variables that have got white background are the legend variables and we do not know what they represent before we run the experiment. When we start executing the experiment, we start to, we start to get values for them. However, they remain latent um, and we are not exactly sure what values we are going to get for them. So these are the two different types of variables that we have got. Uh, I hope this video was helpful for you and if you are interested in looking into more of topic models, please have a look at our other videos. We will also be doing some videos uh, on topic modeling in Urdu or Hindi as well. So thank you. Uh, thanks for watching.